My name's Aileen McLean, I'm the telecare worker in Kintyre. I'm Heather Tierney, I'm the telecare worker for uh, Cowell and Butte area. Um, currently do assessments for people, clients that are requiring telecare for various number of reasons. It could be someone that's possibly in hospital and they're needing equipment to keep them safe at home. We also deal with mental health clients, uh, learning disabilities, domestic violence and abuse. Um, lots of different aspects. I think a lot of people don't realise the vast amount of um, clients that we actually cover. And I've been doing this role for approximately 14 years now and it's a job I thoroughly enjoy and there's a lot of uh, enjoyment from it and um, meeting various people. I think a lot of people believe and think that telecare is only for a certain age and they think, okay, I'm not ready for that yet. I'm not 60, 70, 80. I've not had a fall. It's not just for people that fall. There's people that are vulnerable on their own, but it's not just for people that are on their own. It's also for people that they may have a long-term condition. It could be for various reasons. The family also want a respite. They want to go away and leave them in the house. So it's good you know, for that to know that they're safe. A lot of their family could live abroad also, and they know that their parents or their family have got this equipment in the house to hopefully keep them safe. A lot of young adults um, that will be living on their own, they may have had full support initially, and it's to try and keep them independent also. Um, support could be slowly removed to see how they get on, so we can put our equipment in to monitor um, movements in the house, just basically to see how they're coping in and around the home. It's all about trying to maintain people in a safe environment and predominantly at home, but you're not trying to take away their independence, you're trying to give them more independence. There is a stigma that it's older people that need to telecare, but in fact it's trying to retain independence rather than taking it away, particularly vulnerable people. You know, their health may be deteriorating, you know, maybe needing a little bit more support. So we've got people with packages of telecare, they've been ill and they then want to progress uh, to make themselves better and be able to do more things for themselves. So we can put in equipment that can help them and keep them safe while they build up their confidence um, and they start doing more for themselves rather than somebody coming and doing it for them. Very valuable for family because they have peace of mind, the systems in there keeping them as safe as they could possibly can, especially family that are away. Um, and carers as well, if they're needing a break, they can go out yeah. knowing that they're going to be safe. Um, and we can just get help if they require it 24 hours a day. And we pick up what we call key holders and it depends who they, the person want us to put down as a key holder. If they don't have any family or friends that can be responders then in most areas of Girl and Butte we have a responder team. Um, so we've got a day response and night response uh, for people who don't have uh, any friends or family that can do that. Um, so there will always be somebody who could respond to that person. The responder service will just go out to actually check on that person. It may be something that, that they could solve uh, just with their visit and it doesn't need to be escalated. Um, but it, there's so many different um, scenarios that can develop. I mean they can, if they know, if the call centre are aware the responders are they're aware that they have hurt themselves and they're able to communicate and they know that they may need an ambulance, they will automatically call an ambulance. We don't wait for responder services to go. They will certainly call them, but they will contact the, the ambulance yeah. because they don't want somebody to be lying there for any length of time if they are very ill and unwell. I would say my main goal is to make people more independent and uh, give them the confidence uh, to carry on with the they want to do. We usually get the referrals through a phone call to us directly or through duty social worker and there is an online uh, an assessment tool yeah. you can go on and you can do a self-referral. We get various, there's various ways of, of the referral coming in, information leaflets uh, that are available to people and we go out promoting service as well but we need people mm -hmm. to tell other people about the service the like the professionals, like the nurses, the doctors, the social workers um, so the more people know about the service the more information can get out there um, to help. There's leaflets with our, our contact information so if 
they come to us if we get client referred to us we can then contact them to give them more information on the, the equipment. There is a brief description of the equipment, but it doesn't go into the, the depth that we can go into with that person. That's part of our assessment, is to establish what equipment we feel is necessary for them, because everybody is completely different.